Hi, it's Joey Remini here from seekingbalance.com.au and I'm a vestibular audiologist and today I'm actually going to talk about the process of getting investigation through vestibular testing and what that means. So generally speaking, when someone presents with vertigo or dizziness and the doctors are not sure what's happening, they will order more tests. And part of that is often a hearing test and that is probably the most important test you can ever get done because it does give us a lot of information about how your cochlear nerve and your hearing nerve are performing and also some information around the middle ear and the inner ear bones and so this is very uh, middle ear bones I should say so this is very important for understanding the health and the mechanics of your ear now beyond a hearing test we can also do bedside tests which are looking for the loose calcium particles to check for BPPV or positional vertigo in any of the canals of the left or right ear. They're very gentle uh, bedside motions where you lay down and you have your chin up. So it's nothing to be afraid of, but a super effective and again, highly recommended investigation to go through. And that one's easy to treat too. So if you find it, it's kind of like tick. Now I have a simple way forwards. So beyond that, we have looking at the horizontal canal, we have the head impulse test, which is where you may put on some fancy goggles. You look a bit like an astronaut or scuba diver. And the audiologist will do quick movements of your chin and your head. And every time the head moves, we know that the eyes move to compensate for that. So they move in equal and opposite directions. Now, if there's an inner ear damage to the left or the right side, these tests will show which canal is damaged. And we can do it for the anterior canal and the posterior canal as well, depending on what movements we move the head. So basically we're looking at when your head moves, do your eyes follow in the equal and opposite direction, indicating a healthy functioning inner ear. Other tests are VEMP tests, vestibular evoked myogenic potentials. And that's a really fancy word for saying when we put loud sounds into the ears or loud vibrations through the body, which could be tapping or it could be bipping sounds through the ears, does it evoke a spinal response through the vestibular spinal muscles? So we're looking for healthy movements of the otoliths and we can record that on muscles such as the neck muscles or the eye muscles. So you might have some recording pads on your body as well as sounds and vibrations and the audiologist performing that with you will explain what they're finding as they go. Generally, we're looking for healthy, normal functioning reflexes through the ocular reflexes or the spinal reflexes. And this is all re reliant on a healthy inner ear. Now, the last one I want to mention is calorics, which most people don't like. And this is when we put warm or cold, either water or air into the ears. Often it's air and it's noisy. It goes for one or so minutes and it actually generates artificial vertigo. So we're changing the thermal temperature of the bones around the ear canal which changes the, the thermal temperature of the fluid moving around the horizontal inner ear canal, the semicircular canal. Now, if your ear is healthy, you're going to have a spinning effect and you're going to experience vertigo during testing. If your ear is completely dead and there's no function, you'll feel nothing. It'll just be noisy water or ear in, air or water in your ear. But what do all these tests mean? So really what we're looking for is, is there function present in your inner ears in the five parts? So we've got the three semicircular canals and we've got the two otoliths. So we've got 10 things to assess in each ear. And as you go through each of the vestibular testing, we're trying to isolate, can we locate any permanent damage? Now, sometimes and quite often, actually, your results will be totally normal because we're finding that all the function is healthy and you're thinking, all right, well, what's wrong with me? And as we've discussed in a lot of these other previous videos, you can have normal test results, but still have um, vestibular conditions, all right? So don't feel let down or upset. It's a good thing if your ears are working and there will be a reason why you're feeling what you're feeling, but sometimes it's not coming from the inner ear, it's coming from the brain pathways, such as vestibular migraine or persistent postural perceptual dizziness. So they're the major tests. The testing can take anywhere from two to three hours and you should be absolutely fine after the test so that you don't have to worry about permanent damage. However, if you're ever feeling uncomfortable and you're not happy with the tests, you can always ask the clinician to stop or pause or give you a break. I think that's fair enough. And if you do find damage in the inner ear, it doesn't mean an awful lot either. 
um, actually ele electrocochleography is, is a test we do for looking for an inner ear fluid imbalance for many years. And look, they're not hard and fast conclusive findings. You could get a positive result or a negative result and it still doesn't really mean anything. It's, it's a one tiny little jigsaw puzzle in a whole um, investigation process. So it's really important you hold your results lightly. They are not diagnosing you. They are giving you information about what the test is finding on the day. And yes, you can get different test results on different days. So we're very lucky to have this medical, medical opportunities for investigation, but it's important not to get bogged down in investigation and diagnosis because at some point you're going to have to step into healing and using neuroplasticity and a support program and a daily practice to help rebuild new neural pathways regardless of your test results, okay? So if you're not feeling steady, you're going to have to cultivate new steady pathways for yourself in your body. So I want to share with you that the vestibular testing is important and valuable, but it's not everything. And if you haven't had all of those tests, it's fine too. Because when we give you a clinical history and we ask you questions, we learn a lot about what your diagnosis is likely to be. So often with a hearing test, clinical history, and an MRI scan, or perhaps a CT scan if, if needed, that, that'll be more than enough, really more than enough. So talk to your doctors if you have any questions or you feel like you haven't had all the tests you need. Make sure you've had your whole pike bedside test to test for BPPV because that one is so simple and easy to treat. And aside from that, make sure you move towards healing and supporting yourself to recover. So don't get bogged down in the diagnosis and the endless battery of testing, okay? None of that is actually going to help you heal. That's helping us learn about your inner ears and what function you have available. So I hope that's been clarifying for you and helped answer a few questions. Um, definitely don't be afraid of the test. They are gentle, but some of them are noisy. And, you know, they're not necessarily a walk in the park, but they are gentle and you'll be looked after. So all the best and I hope you get the right diagnosis for you.